Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to my video showing my Malco brand scratch all. You're at the We All Juggle Knives channel, by the way. So this item was $8. It is available on Amazon, and I will include links in the text description box in case you want to pick one up. So basically, this is a four inch long steel spike that is a quarter inch in diameter, and I have added a paracord lanyard to it. So as you can see, this type of lanyard is meant to keep the item in hand and at the ready. Even if I release my grip, it'll remain in place. All right, so this is an, essentially an anti-disarm type of lanyard. Now this all was inspired by some research I did into World War I and World War II. Specifically, I was looking at items that were used and designed for trench warfare, or just close range, hand-to-hand -hand fighting. Now a scratch all is normally just a tool. It's used for puncturing, as well as scratching marks onto a surface, usually marking where you wish to cut. But like a lot of tools, if used as a weapon, this could cause a lot of damage. So as far as the study and collection of weapons, this would be categorized as an improvised weapon. Now would be a good time to state my disclaimer. I do not encourage acts of violence, but what I do encourage is uh, one, historical research into warfare and weapon usage, All right? two, legitimate self-defense, three, peaceful collecting, and four, a legitimate practice of the martial arts. Now I happen to be part Filipino, and I was raised with the Filipino blade arts. All right, that is the end of the disclaimer. And if you're wondering, why do you have to have a disclaimer? Well, you know, Google and YouTube, they have their rules. So as I was researching trench fighting and trench warfare, I came upon a lot of trench knives. Now a trench knife is essentially brass knuckles combined with a spike or with a knife. All right, there's an item called the French nail that looked pretty interesting. You can look up French nail. Now, brass knuckles are illegal in many places, including where I live, so I cannot manufacture a trench knife, but I can make this. The lanyard has the same benefits of weapon retention, but it is soft, so it doesn't count as knuckles. Now, when I was younger, I did manufacture trench knives. I used a carabiner from the hardware store as the knuckle guard, Ah, you know misspent youth. There you see the smaller version of the Malco scratch all. Now underneath the grip wrap, the larger one actually has the same type of handle. It is an orange screwdriver type handle with grooves. Now the smaller one is an eighth of an inch in diameter and both the handle and the spike are a bit shorter. All right now I did see some reviews. Some people said that the smaller one actually broke but I found no reviews saying that this larger quarter inch diameter one broke and you know it's just more material it is stronger i am also able to throw these a short distance not that i necessarily would advocate doing that in most situations in most situations it's going to be much more deadly in your hand uh, but at the same time you know if a, if a spike is flying towards someone's face it tends to make them react and maybe you could capitalize on that but I don't know, I'm, I'm not going to apologize for knowing how to throw all right let's uh, switch gears a little and talk about the accusation that sometimes you'll get if you like weapons of any kind including firearms people will say that the weapon itself is somehow evil well i disagree because i don't believe inanimate objects have a, a moral character Right, The morality of a physical object is determined by who is wielding it, the intention and the results of the person. A person can be evil or good. An object cannot. Even an object capable of doing damage, almost any object like an automobile, could also do damage in the wrong hands. Even a weapon in the right hands can defend people, can defend civilization, can defend a country or community or individual so it's all about the person not about the object and that goes for firearms too in my opinion all right but that being said uh, this thing you know if used as a weapon purely for puncturing and piercing and uh, I would not want to be on the receiving end of that 
uh, definitely I can see why uh, stuff similar to this w was used and designed for the trench warfare. Now as far as how that lanyard is secured to the handle, it splits into two strands. I loop it around in a groove. I knotted it. I looped it back around to the front, knotted it again, and looped it back around, knotted it a third time. Now the end that loops around the pommel, that's also in a groove. It's secured by uh, three layers of electrical tape and then it is knotted and fused to the end and then it's all wrapped with grip tape. I know that's hard to follow, but just trust me, with an item like this, uh, I would never make one that wasn't as secure as I could possibly make it. Now as for that repeating knot that actually forms the lanyard, I learned that right here on YouTube from a tutorial video made by a buddy of mine, so I will include that link in the text description box. Now that grip wrap that I used, that's actually tennis racket grip wrap, and I will include a link to that in the text description box. And the paracord, you know, I used to buy like the, the 50 foot little things of paracord, but now if you wanna save money, buy paracord in bulk. Again, I'll include some links where you can get a large amount of paracord, save yourself some money. Also in the text description box, I will list links to items related to self-defense, uh, tire thumpers, defensive spikes, things of that nature. So be sure to check those out. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, feel free to subscribe. This has been We All Juggle Knives. I'm out.